We do our research with a human data-driven approach. We develop novel AI models by understanding how human behave, how human perceive things with the help of the VR AR, which help us to collect a massive amount of human data. And we develop AI models to depict those complicated massive data. And then we can use these AI models to make the display better and make the electronic system better as well as safer. Welcome to my office. We do research primarily focused on human-centered visual computing. Particularly, we group human combination uh, to combine that with AI. We work on several problems, for example, how to make the future vehicles safer for drivers driving in a busy urban scenario, as well as we work on the future display system so that it consumes less power, more energy efficiently, as well as the future of generative AI, which consumes uh, less power for more energy sustainability. In the future media, the emerging VR and AR to replace our mobile phones so that we can use them 24 by 7. Human is, is a very complicated computational system, so we perceive our time by integrating multiple cues from what we see on the retina and therefore processing the brain. So we figured actually we can manipulate and optimize what you actually see from your eye so that it can reduce or enlarge your perceived time. Right? So uh, imagine you are sitting in a very empty room being getting very bored. People naturally feel the time passes very slowly, right? But if you're watching a very fascinating Hollywood film, we tend to think the time passes very fast. So there's a correlation between the perceived time as well as what we observe. We actually extend it as a mathematical model so that it can guide what you see in the VR by changing all what the humans see. A human is probably the most complicated physical system, more complicated than any other machines probably that we can invent. So understanding how humans work in a mathematical way with the tools of AI and all that is requires massive amount of data, new knowledge, and also humans are very noisy, right? So each, even for ourselves, when we're doing the same thing every time, we probably behave differently. So all those complications make this interdisciplinary crossroad between human and computer very challenging and complicated. While the smartphones being massively deployed, we didn't know the negative consequence. There are statistics showing because of the smartphone usage, people keep watching that, and it killed more than 3,000 people a year because of this distraction from this emerging media. But we will see in the future, generative AI as well as VR AM displays can replace what we see every day. So we want to understand the potential negative consequence and even optimize those emerging media to make our lives safer to make this media more environmentally friendly before we see the massive deployment. We do our research with a human data-driven approach. We develop novel AI models by understanding how human behave, how human perceive things with the help of the VR AR, which help us to collect a massive amount of human data. And we develop model AI models to depict those complicated massive data. And then we can use these AI models to make the display better and make the electronic system better as well as safer to humans. We develop human-centered models, mathematical models, as well as machine learning AI-based models that understand probabilistic variances about human behavior, human cognition. And then we leverage those models to optimize display optics, to optimize electronic system for faster human performance as well as display system performances. Really, our research started with very low-level cognitive measurement. We call it psychophysics. Psychophysics means how humans psychologically and cognitively react to different physical content. The unique thing for VR and AR display is that we have the full field of view that's covered by the display. So we operate different parameters of the physical stimuli. For example, the image brightness, the image frequency, where the display, the, the content that displays on your visual field. So we build a very parameterized, controllable understanding of those, how those visual contents influence our reaction. We use eye tracking technologies to know where people's gaze is at, where people are looking at, how fast do we look at things. You really collect more than 30,000-ish human trials so that with this massive data, we develop AI models to interpret what's behind it, right? So what's the uncertainty? What is the general population behavior to that? And then those AI models summarize this data really well. It can use to guide new displays. For example, if I want to 
generate uh, head up display content so that the driver's eye movement is faster, right? So we can use this AI models to inverse engineer this content. This is a collaboration that we had uh, with NVIDIA, who is a major player in terms of graphics as well as esports. Esports is different from entertainment. Uh, this is a professional computation. So a lot of times in professional computation, one frame on display system, which is about 10 to 20 milliseconds, can completely change the result in professional players. They are like Olympic player versus the gym workers, right? In, for example, in this particular case of esports, uh, there are two teams. People may be assigning one of the team. Their major performance metric is how fast you can identify targets in your opponent team. The faster people can identify the opponent team, the faster they can take a reaction about, and then the higher running rate they have. So right now, people can even buy different skins. The natural cognitive question to ask is, is this fair in terms of can I change my skin so that my reaction triggered by my opponent team becomes slower? Then that naturally induces some unfairness in terms of computation. So we use our machine learning model to predict, okay, if this is a skin of this player, how fast would a natural human observer react? So we actually found that in this particular computation, one of the team predicted by our model can have a one frame faster reaction time than the other team. So that naturally burn up this in this professional computation is a design fair uh, to begin with, so that in the future we want to minimize this kind of unfairness. So we recently had a collaboration with Meta, who of course is the manufacturer of uh, the VR headset, and then we did a very thorough me measurement of if we consume every milliwatt from the display, what is a numerical visual quality that we get. So we may expect the non-linear curve that when you consume more power on a very high level, the gain you get is already marginal, right? So if you ask a game developer or engineer this question, so I want my game to be played on a VR headset for two hours. Tell me how should I do that? This is the battery, but the battery by default doesn't run that long. So we can render a guidance of how does this game look, and then based on the individual need of the battery life. My undergraduate was in theoretical mathematics, right? So while I was learning mathematics, I figured the fascinating part of that is a language that can describe everything, not only in a, how the universe works, but even how human works. I figured if we can use mathematics to describe how human cognition works, that can give us a lot of new experience, safer, and more efficient visual computing system. And in graduate school, I was lucky enough to have an interdisciplinary collaboration with many people from backgrounds such as neuroscience, physics, as well as healthcare in radiology. When I was in graduate school, I worked at NVIDIA Research as a research intern. So we collaborate in the same team and with interdisciplinary collaboration, we work together with neuroscientists, physicists. And that was the first time that I realized actually computer or computation doesn't have to be limited to the computer itself. Right? So computational algorithm can actually be used to tell how the human brain works, how the human eye works. And we also build a new display system for future hologram so that they can reduce a significant amount of computation to enable real-time hologram.